primates. We're primates, and we know monkeys are primates, but what are primates? What are their characteristics? And what's their evolutionary history? This is the topic for today's video. Here, in part one, we'll be focusing on non-human primates. For humans and our very close relatives, that'll be covered in part two. Primates are characterized by their highly developed brains, especially the cerebral cortex, their excellent vision, color and acuity, along with binocular vision for depth perception, and their grasping hands, which have five digits and usually flat nails. Other characteristics include changes to the clavicle and scapula, leading to an extremely flexible shoulder joint, as well as plantigrade locomotion. Primates use the palms of their hands and feet for walking. The first primate is thought to be a small, shrew-like animal that lived around the time of the end Cretaceous extinction, roughly 66 million years ago. This creature would have been arboreal, living in the trees, and nocturnal, and preferred a warm, moist environment. In this video, we'll be exploring the diversity of primates, including most of the great apes. I also have a follow-up video that covers humans and other hominins in more detail. The outgroup in our primate phylogeny here is the kalugo, or flying lemur. But they don't fly, and they're also not lemurs. I, I won't be talking about them in this video. So let's go ahead and talk about the two oldest living lineages of primates, the bush babies and lorises. Bush babies, or galagos, are small nocturnal omnivores native to sub-Saharan Africa. They exhibit a mix of social and solitary behaviors and have an incredible jumping ability. Apparently, in Nigeria, dead bush babies are never found on the ground. Instead, they build nests out of sticks or branches and die there. But I'm not sure if anyone's been able to verify this. Sister to bush babies are the lorises, which live in the forests of India, Sri Lanka, and portions of Southeast Asia. Like bush babies, lorises are nocturnal and have a very good grip. However, their tails are short or absent, and instead of jumping about, lorises move slowly and carefully, including when they're foraging for insects, which are a large part of their diet. Some lorises are extremely territorial, and one group, the slow lorises, are the only primates that are venomous. Their bites are painful, and their venom causes necrotizing fasciitis. The surrounding flesh rots away. But these may not be defenses against predators, but instead involved in defending their territory, as well as keeping their fur free from parasites. What's interesting to me is that the females of some species park their newborn offspring in trees so they can go out and collect food. This is okay, though, because newborns are relatively well-developed and mothers will coat them in a mild toxin, that venom, for additional protection. Regardless, they'll stay in vocal contact the entire time, making clicks and squeaks. Next on our list, we have the lemurs, which is obviously the best group of primates. Found only in Madagascar, most lemurs are diurnal, active during the day, and typically feed on plant leaves and fruits. Lemurs were not actually present on Madagascar when it separated from Gondwana, but instead, their ancestors arrived on the island by rafting hundreds of miles from Africa across the Mozambique Channel more than 60 million years ago. 
Rafting is a type of oceanic dispersal that involves a small population getting swept out to sea on a tangled mat of vegetation. Based on what we know about the ocean currents at the time, their entire journey could have taken a little less than a month. After arriving on the island, the relative lack of other arboreal mammals, especially primates, which were evolving around this time, presented a valuable ecological opportunity. This lineage experienced an adaptive radiation, and there are over 100 species of lemurs today in a wide diversity of habitats. If you're interested in learning more evolutionary concepts featuring lemurs, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Links are in the description. In Next, we have the eye eyes. Eye eyes, lemurs, lorises, and bush babies all make up the Strepsorhini or Strepsorhini, the wet nosed primates. The tips of their snouts are furless, soft, and leathery, sort of like a dog's or a cat's. Eye eyes are large nocturnal primates related to lemurs, and they're also endemic to the island of Madagascar. There is only one living species of eye eye, and it's not clear if their ancestors rafted to Madagascar with lemurs or if they arrived separately. Eye eyes are arboreal. Most live high in the rainforest canopy. While they might not be completely solitary, eye eyes tend to establish their own territory for foraging for food. While they are omnivores, the hands, ears, and teeth of eye eyes are specially adapted for percussive foraging. They tap on trees, listening for hollow chambers that contain beetle grubs. Then they use their rodent-like teeth to gnaw into the wood and pry out the grubs with their thin middle finger. Unfortunately, in Malagasy culture, eye eyes are viewed as harbingers of evil or death. If an eye eye points its thin middle finger at a villager, this is a very bad omen. Some even believe that the eye eye itself will enter a home at night and stab you through the aorta with their thin finger. Ultimately, this means that many eye eyes are killed on sight, which makes conservation of this species difficult, as it's listed as endangered by the IUCN. The rest of our primates are haplorines, or dry-nosed primates. We'll start by looking at the tarsiers. Although their distribution once spanned several continents, Asia, Europe, North America, and potentially Africa, today tarsiers are only found in parts of Southeast Asia, like Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Their diet is mostly insects, but they are carnivores and will also eat other small animals, including reptiles and birds. Their large eyes, good hearing, slender hind limbs, and long tails are adaptations for catching prey. Tarsiers are strong climbers and excellent jumpers. Some tarsiers can hear extremely high frequencies of up to 91 kilohertz and secretly communicate using ultrasound, which might be useful since they are also nocturnal. Tarsiers are generally considered vulnerable to extinction, and some species are critically endangered. They face a wide range of threats, including being hunted for bushmeat, collected for use in traditional medicines, or trafficked to be sold in the exotic pet trade. Their habitats are also being degraded or destroyed by humans, and because of their small size, they're particularly vulnerable to predators. When protected areas are designated, they need to have the correct canopy structure to be able to hide, although some tarsiers appear to have the capacity to adapt behaviorally. 
For example, in disturbed habitats, a tarsier will sleep all alone so a predator doesn't come in and wipe out their entire family group. This brings us to the simians, or higher primates. The oldest living group of simians are the New World monkeys, platyrrhini. New World monkeys, like this spider monkey, are found in the tropical regions of Mexico, Central, and South America. There are five families of New World monkeys, and representative members include tamarins, capuchins, and titis. Monkeys in the family Atelidae, howler, spider, and woolly monkeys, along with gracile capuchin monkeys, the genus Cebus, have evolved fully prehensile tails separately through convergent evolution. Prehensile tails are a fifth limb capable of grasping and holding objects and also help to improve balance and maneuverability. Capuchins are some of the smartest monkeys and are capable of using stones and sticks as tools when foraging or preparing foods. There are even cases of capuchins using insect repellent or bug spray created by crushing millipedes and rubbing them in their fur to ward off mosquitoes. Because of their high level of intelligence, Capuchins have been trained to assist organ grinders, street musicians, or as service animals. Some people also keep them as exotic pets. A famous example is David Schwimmer's character on Friends, who had a pet capuchin named Marcel. But these animals really shouldn't be kept as pets. There are health and safety risks along with animal welfare concerns. Finally, we have the Old World primates, which includes Old World monkeys and apes. The Old World monkeys are represented by two groups, colobines, or leaf-eating monkeys, and cercopithecines, like macaques and baboons. Colobines and cercopithecines are referred to as Old World monkeys, although technically, this term only applies to the Cercopithecines. Both groups can be found throughout Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and Japan. Colobines include colobuses, langurs, and odd-nosed or proboscis monkeys, and they're herbivores with sac-like compartments in their stomachs that harbor mutualistic bacteria that helps them digest cellulose. This isn't as easy as it sounds because their stomachs are so delicate they can get sick easily and their guts can get so swollen from gas that they look pregnant. The cercopithecines, on the other hand, are omnivorous and many forage for food in large groups. Baboons, vervets, mangabees, Mandrills and macaques are characterized by their cheek pouches and ischial callosities, or butt pads. Many cercopithecines are semi-terrestrial, with some living on rocky outcrops and foraging in grasslands. They also show a high level of sexual dimorphism. Males are much larger and more aggressive than females. Some species have been introduced to other parts of the world, like the green vervets of St. Kitts. Here, they outnumber humans with their populations in the tens of thousands, thriving in disturbed habitats. They are very entertaining to tourists, but because they're an especially damaging invasive species and agricultural pest, there are actually government incentives to kill the monkeys and eat them. Monkey meat, or tree mutton, is cheap and commonly eaten by locals, but this is generally kept a secret from tourists. The goal, though, is to develop a sustainable plan for managing their populations in the Caribbean. We'll continue now to the apes. Most of us are pretty familiar with the great apes, since we're one of them, 
But how much do you know about the lesser apes, the gibbons? Gibbons live in the subtropical and tropical forests of Southeast Asia, Bangladesh, and Northeastern India. They're small arboreal species, and while social, they're also highly territorial and well-known for making loud vocalizations, hollering, whooping, and hooting, with the front of their necks swelling up like balloons in the process. Gibbons have curved fingers and extremely strong and flexible shoulder joints that are well adapted for brachiating. This type of movement is also called suspensory climbing or arm swinging, and it's a pretty stereotypical trait for Hollywood apes, but it's rare to see apes doing this in the wild, at least for extended periods of time. Gibbons, though, as a lesser ape, are smaller and more lightweight, so this type of movement is well suited to them. Lesser apes are an important link between old world monkeys and the great apes. But the evolutionary relationships among the four different lineages of gibbons are less clear because there is a high rate of chromosomal rearrangements in gibbons. Their chromosomes evolve very quickly, and when reconstructing phylogenetic trees, we end up with polytomies, or pitchforks, and issues with incomplete lineage sorting. Now that we've reached the great apes, we'll need to draw a new phylogenetic tree so we can cover them in more detail. The oldest living group of great apes are the orangutans, which are beautiful, peaceful creatures of the forest. Orangutans are found in the rainforests of Borneo, Malaysia, and Sumatra, Indonesia. Of the great apes, orangutans are by far the most arboreal, but the males are usually too heavy to swing between the trees, so they have to climb down and back up instead of moving by brachiation. While their diet mostly consists of fruit, they may also eat vegetation, insects, or small animals, including fish. Compared to other great apes, orangutans are also highly intelligent, but more peaceful and have introverted personalities. Orangutans are capable of laughing, or something quite like it, and they can also mimic sounds that they hear, which would be an important step towards the evolution of speech. Like other great apes, orangutans are able to use simple tools, including sticks for reaching and extracting materials, and stones as hammers or cutting devices. Sadly, orangutans are critically endangered because of habitat fragmentation and the pet trade. And as their populations continue to decline, there is the serious threat of a loss in genetic diversity, which makes recovery more and more difficult. Next, we have the gorillas, which aren't quite as violent as Hollywood might make you believe. Lowland gorillas live in the lowland forests and swamps of equatorial Africa, extending as far east as the DRC, Democratic Republic of the Congo. Mountain gorillas can be found in the montane cloud forest of Uganda, Rwanda, and the eastern DRC. Gorillas are technically omnivorous, but their diet is largely vegetarian. Leaves and stems mostly, but occasional fruits as well. Unlike previous groups of primates, gorillas are terrestrial and they move around by knuckle walking. This is quadrupedal movement with their hands curled into a fist. Otherwise, their opposable toes and thumbs would make movement quite difficult. Gorillas live in troops, led by a single dominant male or silverback. Their social dynamics are actually very interesting and fights are very rare. Usually displays or other threats are enough to resolve problems, but when they do fight, it can be deadly because of their enormous physical strength and large canines. 
gorillas also tend to avoid humans, which is probably a good thing since poaching has decimated some populations along with habitat destruction. But any close interaction with humans also poses a risk of contracting diseases, and with the recent Ebola outbreaks in Africa, this has also led to the deaths of potentially thousands of gorillas. All right, next we have the closest living relatives of humans, chimpanzees and bonobos, which belong to the genus Pan. Bonobos, also called pygmy chimpanzees, are smaller than common chimpanzees and have relatively longer arms, pinker lips, and longer hair. Bonobos diverged from the chimpanzee lineage after the formation of the Congo River roughly two million years ago. Chimpanzees are restricted to the north, bonobos to the south. Both bonobos and chimpanzees are frugivorous omnivores, although chimpanzees do have a wider diet breadth, attacking and eating small to medium-sized animals, including other primates. Bonobos and chimpanzees are highly intelligent social animals living in fluid societies and communicating with gestures and vocalizations. And while all great apes can learn to understand simple words and phrases, both bonobos and chimpanzees have demonstrated the highest level of language comprehension of the non-human primates. The smartest bonobo, Kanzi, can respond to around 3,000 different words in English. And there are also chimpanzees who've learned hundreds of signs in ASL, or American Sign Language. Compared to bonobos, behaviorally, chimpanzees are less risk-adverse and more aggressive, and have significantly better spatial memory and abilities for tool use. Most populations of chimpanzees have been actively observed using tools for foraging, collecting termites, honey, and even crafting spears to hunt small mammals. Because of their high intelligence, bonobos and chimpanzees are often involved in research on linguistics and behavioral psychology. Chimps have also collaborated with humans to accomplish scientific achievements, including space exploration. But these collaborations usually come at the expense of their own well-being. Also, because of their genetic similarity to humans and because they're susceptible to many of the same diseases, including HIV, chimpanzees have a long history of being used in invasive medical research and drug testing, and there has been a lot of debate about the ethics involved. Wild chimpanzees are also negatively impacted by humans and face many different threats notably habitat destruction or deforestation, poaching, and human-transmitted diseases. So this all brings us now to humans and our near-human ancestors. But actually, there's a lot more to talk about. So I'm going to jump back to my friend here, and this will actually be it for today's video. To continue our tour of the primates, be sure to check out part two, Humans and Other Hominins. Also, I'd appreciate it if you can like and subscribe if this content has been helpful. Maybe you're reviewing for a class or just interested in learning more about animals and ecology. As always, thanks for watching and if you have any questions, they're worth asking. Leave a comment or feel free to reach out to me in any way.